Hi, I'm Hazel. It is almost Saturday, so it's time for a brand new vlog. Uh, this week, um, this morning actually, they announced the official release date of patch 7.1.5, which has been getting very hard to say. Uh, so 715 is coming out on January the 10th, so we're only four days away. Uh, I'm very excited, and I am particularly excited for the Brawlers Guild. I hadn't realized until I actually went back yesterday and looked over all the changes for the new patch that uh, I've realized how much I actually missed doing the Brawler's Guild and they're adding all sorts of new fights and rewards and like the Brawler's Gold currency with that uh, that big basilisk mount. So yeah, can't wait to get my hands on all of that. Uh, depending on how hard the fights are, I might look into doing um, doing guides or at least from my Shadow Priest point of view uh, if the new Brawler's Guild fights are tricky, but we'll have to see about that. Uh, what else happened this week? Um, the PvP situation uh, was addressed yesterday. I was very excited to see them take a look at this. Uh, quick refresher if you're out of the loop. Um, Legion Season 1, the PvP season ended, and a lot of people didn't get titles that expected to. The cutoffs were quite a bit higher than they were thought to be because the available ladder pool was like a third of what people thought it was going to be based on like Arena Mate and Arena Tracker. So people were just real mad about that. We wanted to find out what Blizzard was going to do. Um, and they actually released an update today. So they said um, each season we, we reward titles to the players at the top of the ladders um, based on the players we consider active. For the last few seasons, we've only considered players active if they have a rating above 1,000. Uh, for Legion Season 1, we made the mistake of also requiring players to have 50 wins to be considered. Um, as, a result, as a result, fewer players were considered active than intended, um, and rewards, because they're a percentage, um, not enough of them went out. So what they said is, fortunately, we have a plan in place that will allow us to fix the issue and grant rewards based on criteria we've used in previous seasons. Um, they're going to reevaluate the ladder from season one and redistribute rewards. Uh, you will either receive the same reward you have currently, or in some cases, a higher tier reward if you were on that uh, on that thing. So basically, they're going to fix it. Um, they're going to go back and redo the season one rewards with the normal um, the normal percentages, basically. So if you were above safe-ish cutoff for whatever you thought you were gonna get, there's a good chance you're gonna get it. I have some friends that were very excited for this. Um, they, pushed, they pushed titles and they worked really hard for them. And then when they didn't get them over Christmas, that's just kind of like a kick in the face. So I'm really happy to hear that that's getting fixed. Um, hopefully they continue to use the older criteria going forward into season two, so we don't have this happen all over again. I can't imagine they would do the same mistake twice. Um, and hopefully this is just the beginning of them taking a closer look at um, PvP and participation in Arena and the reward structure and ways to encourage participation to try and bring a little life back into it, because it was a little dead, but hopefully um, at least fixing this issue brings a little bit of life back into the ladder. So uh, that's that. So um, just for channel-wise, um, somebody, and I don't know who because YouTube doesn't tell me, but one of you lovely people submitted Danish subtitles uh, for the Diablo event guide that I put out, uh, not yesterday, but the day previous. Uh, which is super, super cool. So um, I, I looked those over and I approved them and they're up. So now people can view that video with uh, Danish subtitles should they like to. Yeah, big thank you to whoever whoever did that. If you feel inspired to um, community contribute uh, foreign language subtitles for any of my videos, um, I do look over them. So you probably can't just put butts a hundred times in Spanish and hope it goes through um, unless I decide to approve that for some reason, which I probably won't. But yeah, huge thank you for that. That's gotta be a lot of work and I really, really do appreciate it. Also video related, it just feels really good to be um, um, back in making videos. So what's coming next week video wise, I'm going to do a follow up to the OBS guide that talks about um, some more intermediate OBS concepts about, um, you know, bit rate and uh, uh, video quality and stuff like that. Um, I want to do a class changes in 715 summary. That's probably going to have to be Monday for anybody to get it before the patch actually comes out. But I think I'm going to throw together a not a, not a super in-depth. I'm not going to talk about every single change, but I want to go over all the classes and kind of determine did they get overall buffed or nerfed damage wise and PVP wise and talk about some of the changes that that pushed it in that direction. So that's probably going to be Monday if I can get that together over the weekend. And uh, I might finally, at some point this week, hopefully soon, uh, get started working on family familiar guides. That's going to take me a long time because I'm going to need, I'm going to need, um, I'm doing, I'm going to do them one achievement at a time. So I'll do like the aquatic team and then like the, the elemental team or like whatever. Um, and I want to try and find it just like a set of like th three to six pets that you can use for all of them. So you don't need to have a huge amount of um, single type pets for each thing. So basically what I'm saying is they're not going to be super soon, but I haven't completely forgotten about them and I will be doing them. So that's, that's, so it, it's in the pipeline. Um, I'm going to be streaming this afternoon, of course. It is Friday. I'm going to be doing a full-length stream again. Um, I have all the time in the world today, so we're going to be doing our normal 3 to 5. Um, I don't know what to do. I'm torn between Horde skirmishes, because it is skirm week, and my Horde druid does need honor talents. And also PvP practice is also always good. And um, battle pet collecting, because people really liked that last time. And I'm not done. I don't have my I don't have my Legion Safari yet. So I'm torn between those two things. Maybe we'll do a little of both. Maybe we'll start with skirms and move to battle pet collecting, or vice versa. So we'll see. 
and we had some questions. Eileen wants to know, any tips for a good rotation and PvP for Fire Mage? Uh, so, um, I don't actually have any idea about how to play Fire Mage. Like I mentioned, uh, my husband does, so I asked him where he gets all of his info from. And he said, for PvE and rotation info, um, the Altered Time forums, there's a website called Altered Time, and apparently they have guides and forums up, uh, and that's the best place for the PvE, mo the PvE um, information, as well as there's supposedly a mage Discord server floating around that you pr can probably get a link to on that Altered Time website. Uh, and then as far as PvP for Fire Mage, um, the best resource I can think of is um, there's a Fire Mage named Hansel, um, H-A-N-S-O-L. Uh, he has a YouTube channel and he also has a Twitch stream. A lot of it's gameplay, but I do believe he does some guides. And he's also pretty good um, in memory about answering questions from people that show up in his Twitch chat. So he's probably the best resource for Fire Mage PvP because I can't think of anybody else that has been as dedicated as that guy to Fire Mage PvP specifically. So Altered Time Forms. Uh, the Mage Discord, which you can probably get to from the Elder Time website, and then um, Hansel's YouTube and Twitch channel. I don't have a link just handy, but I bet you anything you can just Google it, H-A-N-S-O-L, uh, wow, and you'll find his Twitch and his YouTube. Dina asks, I want to try doing some raids in dungeons. Um, I've only soloed things so far. Do you have any recommendations for getting started? So, um, first step is going to be getting really comfortable with your class and your role, um, just like in PUD content. So, of course, you know, your, your, random, your random heroic dungeons, um, uh, your LFR, and then from there you move into um, pugging, pugging content like uh, Mythic Plus. Uh, you get into some Mythic Plus pugs, you get into some like normal Emerald Nightmare pugs, maybe some normal Trial of Valor pugs. Uh, and you want to try and look for guild pugs because um, typically those will just be guilds that are a little short on their roster and they just need to pick up a couple extra people to get through the raid. And those guilds are typically the ones that are recruiting. So look for look for guild specific pugs for things like Mythic Plus and, um, and normal raids. And then once you're actually in that guild group, if it's a good fit, you mentioned that you're guildless and that you're looking for a guild to raid with. And if it, if it fits well and it works out, you can spend some more time with them, maybe talk to them in voice chat, see if it's a place you're going to fit in. And then if it works out, then you found your guild. So that's probably my recommendation is to, um, to of course, get, get comfortable with your class and your role so you feel like you're representing well and you're putting forward a good first impression. Uh, and then you want to um, pug Mythic Plus, um, just kind of work your way through the Mythic Plus difficulty, start at the bottom and work your way up. And then pug um, group finder groups for raids. Uh, it's not all going to be sunshine and butterflies that any time that you're pugging with random people, there are going to be people that are not very nice and it's just, it just happens. Uh, you, just need to, you just need to not listen to them and brush it off and keep looking because eventually you'll find, you'll find your people. Um, I, do recommend, I do recommend joining a guild and the best way to find one is by playing with them first because the last thing you want to do is find a guild online and then pay for a server transfer and then you get there and you just hate them. Like you don't want, you don't want that. Uh, and then Colby wants to know, I would really like to know positioning for casters. I'm Ellie, I want to play LSD and I need to know how to help my healer. Um, so first of all, um, Alun bless you for trying, <laughs> um, for, for thinking of your healer. As healers, we play with a lot of DPS that just live their lives and then you just have to kind of do your best. Uh, so positioning for LSD in a way that helps your healer is pretty much 90, like 50% of it is just your normal kiting. Obviously you don't want to let, as an Ellie shaman in particular, um, you shouldn't really be letting melee DPS beat on you, um, particularly not with their cooldowns up. So you want to make sure that you have um, kiting abilities like your um, your thunderstorm thing, for example, or your root totem available for when they do damage, so that you're not sitting there tanking the damage when they have um, when they have their thing up. Um, you want to communicate. I mean, I know this isn't positioning, but you want to communicate with your healer, of course, to make sure that you don't overlap your wall and um, ironbark or whatever your healer happens to be. Um, but then positioning wise, it's a lot of make sure that you are just keep an eye on where your healer is. Like if he is behind a pillar by your entrance gate and you have dived in behind the pillar on the opposite side of the map on the Grand or Tolveron, you have gone too far. Um, just keep an eye on your healer and make sure that he can be within line of you within like three or four steps and he doesn't have to use mobility abilities just to catch up with you. So as long as you're, you don't have to be right in front of him. You don't have to be like stacked on top of him, but just keep him out. Like don't double pillar basically. Don't go behind two things. You can have one thing in between you because obviously he's going to be lining um, damage and CC and whatever, but don't go behind a second thing. Um, and if you, if you do need to go behind the second thing, like if their team is all pulled back and you and your lock are pushing in for a kill, you want to communicate that to your healer so he can come with you and find out whether or not he has the cooldowns to support you as you all push in together. You don't want to go places alone, basically, is the short, short version of it. Uh, but I will say that I haven't done 
a lot of LSD this expansion. I've done a little bit of it. So I've played more Thunder. Um, and Thunder, what's great about Thunder is that you have a warrior to peel for you. You still have your warlock to do that as an LA Shaman, but it's a little bit less intense. It's a little bit of a different play style. So I'm not the top end resource, but the short version of it is just don't run miles away. Keep an eye on where he is and communicate with him when you do need to push in so he can come with you. So that has been my week. If any of you have questions you would like answered on the vlog, just leave them as comments on the most recent vlog. I uh, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.